In the past few years, we've heard a lot about all those job titles like data scientist, data analyst, data engineer, data architect. In today's video, I want to demystify some of those main data roles. After all, I've been working in the past four years as a data analytics consultant, and I thought I should make a video about this. So in this video, I'm going to explain different kinds of data science careers that exist nowadays. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk about the skill sets you need for each type of career and some tips and tricks for those who are aspiring to break into data science and succeed in the field. So if that's you, stay until the end of this video. So let's first talk about the term data science. Data science is not a single discipline. It is rather an umbrella or generic term that describes a complex process in a team of data scientists with almost non-overlapping skills. If we look at a data science pipeline, pipeline means the whole workflow that involves everything you do with data in order to obtain values and actionable insights from your data. For example, an e-commerce platform who uses shopping behavior data to improve their sales or an organization who wants to improve their retention rate using employees' data. A paper from MIT published last year in 2020 defined two distinct but interconnected areas in the data science pipeline, backend and front-end data science. Backend data science deals with hardware, efficient computing, and data storage structure. Example roles in this area are data engineer and data architect who create and develop data models, database system, data APIs, and data warehousing solutions. Front-end data science, on the other hand, is geared more towards data analysis, machine learning, and building applications that interact with end users. These areas involve roles such as data analysts who wrangle, explore, quality assess, fit models to data, and perform statistical inference. We also have data scientists in this field who is a step above data analysts in terms of technical skills. They use complex statistical and machine learning models, deep learning models to explore patterns in data, detect anomalies, and create prediction models. Or another important role is machine learning engineers who work with data scientists to build and assess prediction models and make the solutions scalable and robust for many users. A less technically oriented role would be business intelligence analysts or just business analysts who link data insights to actionable business insights to improve business processes. They are also strong communicators to spread the message to the team and convince management in their decision making. And then overarching this whole pipeline, we have data science software developers who are not directly involved in data science pipeline, but instead develop software tools that facilitate data science. Examples are developers of Hadoop, R, RStudio, iPython notebooks, TensorFlow, D3, Pandas, Tidyverse, and all kinds of tooling and packages. From my experience working in the field of data science with a lot of clients and in different kinds of projects, I think in reality, there are so many more data-related roles surrounding this pipeline. Some of them are not talked about nearly as much as roles like data scientists or business analysts, but they're also known as important or less interesting. It would be a waste to not consider these roles if you love working with data. For example, data journalists are those who communicate data insights through data visualization or presentation. If you read big online newspapers like the New York Times, you may have come across some beautiful and eye-catching data visualizations on these websites. They are entertaining and educational at the same time. A step further is data artists, who are really artists at heart, who use data combined with storytelling as their medium. They often have not only very strong technical skills like programming, web development, and UX design, but they also have very strong aesthetic insight. One of my favorite data artists is Nadia Bremer, who creates beautiful and sophisticated data visualizations, mostly using D3 and Canvas.js. They are visualizations libraries that, um, that are built in JavaScript. If you take a look at her website, you might agree with me that her visualizations 
deserve to be called pieces of art. Uh, one of her visualizations has become my inspiration for a network visualization project I did not so long ago with a client. Another role in the data science team I could think of is data science business developer who has strong domain expertise and at the same time knows data science concepts on a high level. And by high level, I don't mean advanced level, but more that he knows data science concepts in a more generic sense and he knows what's possible, he knows how to apply them to solve a real world problem. But it's not likely he can explain to you the nitty gritty detail of a machine learning algorithm or programming language. What he's good at is connecting the dots and spot valuable data science opportunities for business. As you might already notice, in recent years, data privacy and data security have become a really serious topic. Here in Europe, the GDPR or General Data Protection Regulation has been enforced since 2018. And that's why whenever you visit a website, there's always that annoying cookie pop-up that asks you if you want to accept the usage of cookie on this website or not. And since then, many companies have to hire data privacy officers. In general, they help companies interpret the laws and regulation and advises companies on how to comply to regulation and prevent uh, the risk of potential violation. As you can see, these roles are quite distinct from each other because they belong to different steps of a data science pipeline and different aspects of a data science project. Therefore, they also require very different skill sets, but not completely different. Let me explain. Essentially, the skill set of any data science jobs can be summarized in three core groups of skills, computer science slash IT, math and statistics, and domain slash business knowledge. You can think of it like this. Each data science role that I described to you earlier requires different ratios of these three skill groups. For instance, a data engineer needs to have a bigger portion of computer science IT skills because he needs to understand how a computer works, how data and information are stored, and what are different data structures and how to use them efficiently, and uh, how distributed computing works if he works with uh, big data, for example. A data analyst or data scientist, on the other hand, would need to have strong math and statistics knowledge because they're going to generate insights from data for business and they better be accurate. However, they don't need extremely in-depth computer science or IT skills. There's been quite some complaints about the fact that data scientists don't know how to write quality and production code, and that is true. Their code is usually messy, sometimes repetitive and inefficient because they're too busy with data cleaning, data preprocessing, exploration and making experiments and modeling. So they can't bother cleaning their own code or making it production ready. And this is when machine learning engineers come into rescue. Another example is data science business developer who would need a very strong domain expertise, whatever it is. In a project at work, I worked with a group of doctors and professors from um, a medical university here in the Netherlands. Our team helped them analyze a huge gene sequencing dataset from lung cancer patients. Our task was to find out which genes or which genetic mutations contribute to a particular type of cancer that a patient gets. Because there are two types of lung cancer and one is more malicious than the other and needs a different kind of treatment. So in a sense, these doctors and professors are data science business developers because they have very strong domain expertise. They advise us on what to focus on, what are the different hypotheses that we can look at, and um, all different ideas on how to actually approach this uh, huge data set. So in short, this skill framework can help guide you when you don't know what kind of skill or knowledge you need to obtain for a particular data science career. Of course, we need to look at it in a relative way and put it in the context of regulation, technology development, and all kinds of different human aspects like behavioral science or aesthetic insight. There are so many exciting things in this field and new kinds of career are going to come in existence in the near future. If you're aspiring to start a career in data science and make the best of your career and make it a fabulous and exciting journey, I'd like to give you my two cents just as someone who has been in the field for yeah, a few years earlier. Firstly, in choosing a data science career, don't read too much into all the salary figures that you see online. You might see on some website 
The average salary of a business intelligence analyst is $95,838 per year, while a data analyst only earns $75,253 per year. Does it say anything? I don't think so. If you work with data, you might already know that average numbers usually don't say much. You need to look at the whole distribution. Salaries for the same job title can differ greatly per company, sector, country or region. So don't buy too much into those numbers when you're making decisions. So just go for a job that you're most interested in now and don't look at the salaries just yet. And it brings me to the second point. When you first start out, choose a job that allows you to learn as much as you can. Jobs like entry-level data analysts or junior consultants or junior data scientists can be a very good start, even though you might not earn as high salary as in other jobs. In the book Mastery, Robert Greene refers to this as the apprenticeship phase. He says in his book, It is a simple law of human psychology that your thoughts will tend to revolve around what you value most. If it's money, you will choose a place for your apprenticeship that offers the biggest paycheck. Inevitably, in such a place, you will feel greater pressure to prove yourself worthy of such pay, often before you're really ready. You'll be focused on yourself, your insecurities, the need to please and impress the right people, and not on acquiring skills. It will be too costly for you to make mistakes and learn from them, so you will develop a cautious and conservative approach. As you progress in life, you will become addicted to the fat paycheck and will determine where you go, how you think, and what you do. Eventually, the time that was not spent on learning skills will catch up with you and the fall would be painful. I can totally relate to this because when I first started out as a data analyst at a very, very small startup, okay, the pay was not so great. But in return, I had so much room to learn. I got to do everything from collecting data, analyzing it, visualizing it in any way I want and giving presentations to my managers and clients. I was given the time to explore and tinker with new things, creating silly and sometimes useless stuff. And of course, the best part is no one ever complained about how I spent my time at work. And that experience gave me a great head start in my career and established my self-confidence when I first started out. And thirdly, whatever you do with your job, stretch your own limits and expectation. Do more than what you are asked to, creating things that you feel proud of because you are spending time at work anyway, so why not make the best of it? Create stuff that your boss wants to, to show to anyone he talks to because he finds it so useful. And by doing that, you're speeding up your own learning process and getting new skills faster than others. You can move up to a more senior role more quickly and establish your confidence and credentials. And last but not least, be prepared to commit to lifelong learning. Technology landscape is changing every day. New programming languages and frameworks are popping up every day. Today you're told Python is the best programming language to learn. A few years from now, it can be something completely different. Today you're told to learn Apache Pig, for example. Tomorrow, maybe it's Apache Cat or Bird or Crocodile. I don't know. My point is just pick up a relatively easy and popular programming language like Python, R, JavaScript or SQL. Try to master it now and learn the fundamentals and you can move on to something else later. If you understand the fundamentals, it's relatively easy to transfer that knowledge to a new language. The key is that you never stop learning, whether it is taking online courses, reading books, getting a certificate or degree, Five years ago, I wouldn't imagine myself studying for another bachelor degree and now I'm a computer science undergraduate student while working almost full-time at a quite demanding job. Well, it's not because I hate myself and want to burn myself out. Well, maybe I did. But it's more because I want to keep exploring things and equip myself with a more well-rounded understanding of computer science, AI, and all the applications surrounding that. The more I get into the field, the more I understand that learning is a must-do rather than a nice-to-do. If you want to know more about data science careers, how to land a job or learn how to program, let me know in the comment box below so that I know that I should make more of these videos. And again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.